friends, my name is Carly Cottrell. You may recognize me from the internet. And today we are going on an adventure. We are at the Ash Meadows National Wildlife Refuge. And we are gonna go inside and check out the Devil's Hole. Welcome to what the purpose of the refuge is, National Wildlife Refuge Mission. So basically what their purpose is, it gives you a little bit of a map of what you want to do. This is where we're going. Today we're going to the Devil's Hole. Gonna check that out. Lots of things, lots of stuff to do here. This gives you a basic view of Nevada. This is where we are in the very corner. We're basically almost on the California border. This park is huge. It's got some marshland. It's got a lot of different areas that you can go into. We're now on the border of the park. So now we cannot fly the drone anymore. We got some shots out in the desert just coming in to the border of um, the wildlife refuge. But inside of this property, this is a federal area. This is a protected um, nature preserve basically. So it is illegal to fly the drone inside of the park. You don't want to disturb wildlife. You don't want to disturb um, the environment. You just don't want to risk um, just hurting anything that could be here. So we're going to go ahead and head further into the park. We're going to make our way all the way out to the Devil's Hole. The purpose of why we came out here, I'm really excited for this one. I've seen a couple of different videos on the Devil's Hole and it sounds so interesting. There's so many cool things about it. stopped the car because you can see our first little marshland here. We think of Death Valley as this completely barren and dry landscape with nothing else there. But you can see these underground springs that create these marshlands create a really interesting and diverse ecology of different organisms here. Okay, I have the GoPro mounted on the dash, so I would usually never, but I was driving through the road on the way to the turn for the park, and I saw this kind of creepy turn on. It's a weird, creepy shack, so we're going to go see what this is, because why wouldn't we go check out a weird, creepy shack? And it just says you can't camp here. So I think as long as you are respectful, you can come in here to this little cabin. Let's see what's up here. Pretty cool. Okay, we still have to get to the devil's hole. So, back in the car. Still got a lot of park to explore. Coming up on the 
Devil's Hole parking area, there are a couple other cars here. Finally, the first sign of humans since I've been here. We are going to hike up this small trail. It's, I think, 0.15 miles. It's a very, very small trip that you hike up this little hillside behind me. You can see the sign over here saying this is the Devil's Hole entrance. We'll talk a little bit about the history of Devil's Hole and some of the legends and myths that are associated with it. You can see the trail that leads up this hill. You can also see a little bit of information on the endangered pupfish. These pupfish can only be found in this little pond and nowhere else in the entire world. Just locked up the car. I'm starting my little mini hike up here. Another thing that you should know if you want to come up here, there are no bathrooms up here. It was about a two hour drive from my part of Las Vegas. I uh, definitely should have stopped to go to the bathroom in Pahrump because once you leave Pahrump basically, it's like another 45 minutes out to the park and then you have to go like 10 miles or something all the way to the back of the park on a very slow dirt road so that you can get to this trail so you can start making your way up to see the Devil's Hole. You know, a normal Saturday. The entire area of the Devil's Hole in the preserve, in the refuge, is fenced off. And the whole area around here is actually like fenced with barbed wire. So you can't get anywhere near it unless you go inside of this like weird like Jurassic Park looking tunnel thing. <laughs> uh, and it's because they don't want people going in there. They've had to be really strict with it over the years for a number of reasons, but number one being the ecological preserve of the pupfish. The pupfish are only found in this tiny little pond. This is the only place they are in the entire world. Uh, this was a point of contention for farmers in the area that wanted to use some of the water rights, but once they started drilling down and using some of the water, the water in the pond obviously started to go down and they started to see a sharp decline in the population of the endangered pupfish. And there are only a couple of them left down there. Uh, and again, this is the only place they exist in the entire world. The solar panels behind me here power the security system that keeps this place safe. And you may be wondering like, okay, pupfish, super cool. Um, but why do they really need this much security just to protect a couple of endangered fish? Well, another reason that this place is sometimes considered really dangerous is the pond itself. There are a couple of things that make this place really cool and really unique. I'm a little creepy. You know I love me a creepy place. Now, one of the cool unique features of this um, whole pond, whatever you want to call it, is it's actually part of a really, really deep system of water caves. They actually don't know how deep they go. They have tried to measure it before. But the problem with these water systems is that they're actually a part of a natural hot spring. So the water at the surface is 92 degrees Fahrenheit, which means that the deeper you go and the further you get towards this geological hot spring, the hotter the water gets. I'm really lucky right now because I am the only one out um, on the bridge on the overpass overlooking the Devil's Hole. Let's talk a little bit about why it's so mysterious, some of the history about it, and why it is blocked off like it is today. Devil's Hole is not just home to the endangered pupfish species, but it is also the source of a great deal of First Nation people myth and legends. The Paiute First Nations peoples settled here thousands of years ago, and they had a lot of myths and legends surrounding this area, and specifically this spring itself, this cave, this hole, whatever you want to call it, uh, specifically towards something called water babies and a mythical beast that was said to come out of the hills to roam and eat people even on the surrounding shores. 
On the bridge overpass to the Devil's Hole, there's a plaque that shows what they think the underground cave system might look like, but they actually don't know. The limestone cavern of the Devil's Hole is linked to an underground water system that extends to the northeast for more than a hundred miles. Devil's Hole was formed as a slow subsurface migration of water to the southwest was blocked by a geologic fault, forcing the water to the surface in a series of springs, forming pools and wetlands. The water we see today began its journey at least 8,000 years ago as a glacial melt water, leading to the suggestion that the pupfish swim in fossil water from the last ice age. The same underground system that shelters the pupfish also provides water for people. Increasing demand for more water for farming, industry, and to support growing towns has placed the pupfish in harm's way. Finding a balance to provide enough water to sustain a precarious population of pupfish and a growing community is a major challenge in this arid desert environment. In the 1960s, a small group of young men came out here with the intent of exploring the Devil's Hole and scuba diving in its caverns. Unfortunately, they didn't make it out. The rescue team was sent out to try to recover the bodies of the young men that never made it out of the cave. And unfortunately, even though they dove 350 feet down into the cave system, they were only able to find a snorkel mask and some fins. So what happened to these young men? Did they get lost? Did they get confused? Was there a malfunction with their equipment? Or is there something down there that we really don't know about? Could it have been that they got into a heat pocket of super hot water and were injured or killed and couldn't make it out? Um, or did they just make a wrong turn and were never able to find their way out? Who knows? In addition to the legends and myths of the First Nations people that lived here and to the disappearance of the young men that came to snorkel, we also have the fact that Charles Manson himself brought his family here with the intent of exploring to find an underground system of tunnels where he thought the family could live forever in prosperity until the apocalypse that was happening on the outside of the world ended. He wandered the desert reportedly for three days looking for this very cave and when he found it, he brought the family out here. They meditated just outside of this hole for three days to try to communicate with whatever entity or spirits or energy they believed to reside in the bottom of the cave systems. One of the rumors that surrounds the Devil's Hole is that it is not just a deep series of caverns, but that the water actually connects all the way out to the ocean. Scientific fact, if there is an earthquake as far away as China, Japan, or Chile, the water in this hole will vibrate. And if it's strong enough, you'll see the water slosh from side to side like you're moving around inside a bathtub. This means there has to be some sort of connection, whether it's geological or whether these springs go down just that far to the other side of the world. Death Valley is already famous for supposed UFO activities, lights in the sky, and ex unexplained phenomenon. And the area around the Devil's Hole is no different. People have seen lights coming up out of the water. People have seen lights in the sky above. And some people even speculate that there could not only be a series of underground tunnels, rivers, connecting systems out to the ocean, but there could be entire civilizations down there. There could be an underground, subterranean, aquatic maybe, race of people, or that that's just where <laughs> the UFOs are. Who knows? I have no idea. Let me know if you see anything behind me. Uh, but yeah, there's so much going on here. Um, so we've got First Nation people, myth and legends of the water babies and the hill monster that would come and snatch you up out of it, literally right there if you stood too close to the water. Also, there are warnings that no one should ever swim in the devil's hole for fear of being taken under with the current. Then we have all of the people that have actually drowned and gone missing there. Then we have the Manson family convinced that it led to an underground society or at least an area where their family could be safe until the above world apocalypse ended. Then we have all of the modern day reports of UFO activity, strange and unexplainable phenomenon. So what do you all think? Do you think that there's UFOs? Do you 
think that there could be a creature down there? Do you think that this is just a unique geological phenomenon? Do you think there's anything mysterious or mystical about it? Or are we out in the middle of nowhere talking to a hole? What are we doing? I don't know. But this has been it. Thank you so much. This has been the Ash Meadows National Wildlife Preserve. My name is Carly. We just visited the Devil's Hole just outside of Las Vegas, Nevada. Let me know what you thought. What are your theories on it? Let me know in the comment section down below and I'll see you next time.